Welcome to Structures, the show that explores Toronto's history and architecture. I'm Heather Seaman. Every night of the week, we can find people at the local pub. A couple hundred years ago, things were very much the same, but taverns played a more important role in society than they do today. This week on Structures, we visit a few of Toronto's taverns built in the 19th century. have lined our streets since the 1790s, when Toronto was the town of York. In those days, pioneer life was grueling, and traveling just a few short miles, a tiresome journey. Taverns offered weary travelers a welcome place to drink and rest before continuing their trip. At a time when there were a few public structures, taverns were central to Toronto's social and political development. In the very early days, the taverns were the only buildings among many of Ontario's early roadways and pioneer trails, and uh, people would stop there for their refreshment. And often a community would develop around these hotels and taverns. So you'd get a, perhaps a general store and a blacksmith shop. In the early 1800s, before the railway sped up travel and communication, getting from one place to another often meant an arduous journey along Toronto's muddy, bumpy, and rudimentary streets. Well, people had to travel by horse, horse and buggy, and uh, stagecoach, and that was pretty doggone slow. So about every five miles or so, you had to stop and give the horses a rest, give the passengers a rest. And then, of course, they would um, go in and have a, a beverage or two, uh, not usually tea. And then uh, five more miles down the bouncy road, the passengers have to stop for another sort of break. So they were about every five, six miles da apart down the road. Today, only a handful of taverns that were built in the 19th century remain. The first were located in and around the town of York, west of the Don River, and established in 1793. By 1801, as York grew, there were six licensed taverns, and just over a decade later, there were nine. In those days, they were modest-looking structures built of wood, with the tavern sign displayed out front, sometimes designed by artistically inclined York soldiers. In the very beginning, basically a tavern or an inn could be, was usually just a log cabin, you have a couple of rooms to drink and eat downstairs, and the whole upstairs would be pretty well open in the very first ones, and people would just uh, flake out on the floor. And uh, keep in mind, too, that these early taverns were uh, built through winter, so the walls were thick and the windows small. And on a day like this in old York, where the temperature is in the low 30s, it was uh, totally stifling in those places. Taverns, inns, and hotels were one and the same. Located in and around the growing town, there was never a shortage of places to drink, nor was there a shortage of names for taverns, including place of entertainment, public house, inn, hotel, tippling house, and according to some, a den of infamy. Within York's borders were a number of taverns, including Jordan's York Hotel, that opened in 1801 on the south side of King, between Berkeley and Ontario streets. After the Parliament buildings were burned by Americans during the War of 1812, this building temporarily hosted the Upper Canada government sessions. Back then, Front Street, known as Palace, was the closest street to the lake, with spectacular, unobstructed views of the waterfront. Among the taverns on front was the North American Hotel that hosted author Charles Dickens in 1842. The Butcher's Arms at Front and Jarvis was built in 1840, so named because of its proximity to the town market, then at King and Jarvis. The Butcher's Arms still remains today with Georgian roots that remain evident in its changing surroundings. It was among 20 other taverns here, so many that to the temperance activists, the area came to be known as the Devil's Half Acre. As the 
town of York expanded, taverns of every shape and size were built. On Church Street, south of King, was the Bond Head Inn, named after the controversial Lieutenant Governor, Sir Francis Bond Head. On today's Colburn Street was Frank's Hotel, where the first theater performance in Toronto is said to have taken place. With so many taverns servicing the small population, it's no surprise that concern for the abuse of drinking was felt in the early to mid-19th century. Well, Toronto's uh, original inhabitants, uh, if you drink the water, you could die, let's put it that way, because the uh, outhouses were behind every cabin and uh, animals roamed all over the street, so don't drink the water. Whiskey was 25 cents a gallon. People had it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was uh, just sort of an all-consuming thing. By 1857, problem drinking was so pervasive that one out of every nine people in Toronto was charged with crimes and misdemeanors as a result of inebriation. Next, we'll investigate the mischief that took place at some of Young Street's taverns. <laughs> 